If you're a railroad enthusiast, chances are you've heard of at least a few locomotive builders. And in America, at one time, Baldwin, Alco, and Lima were the biggest manufacturers of steam locomotives. However, there is one company, though their engines may not have been out on the main lines, they could be found in just about every mine, mill, and factory in the United States, and even some places abroad. This is the story of the H.K. Porter Company. Our story begins in 1866 with a man named Henry Kirk Porter. He and his business partner, John Smith, opened a machine shop in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, called Smith & Porter, where they built and repaired various industrial machinery. On March 4, 1867, they received their first order for a locomotive, a small four-wheeled saddle tank similar to the one shown here. Smith and Porter would eventually go on to build a total of 43 steam locomotives, including one for the Northern Pacific Railroad called Minnetonka, which is preserved at the Lake Superior Museum of Transportation, though their specialty was light-duty industrial engines. But sadly, the company didn't last, as a fire broke out at the shop in 1871, destroying it completely, and the partnership between Smith and Porter was dissolved. Afterwards, Porter formed a partnership with a man named Arthur Bell to form Porter Bell & Company. They expanded the market into narrow-gauge locomotives, building small freight and passenger locomotives. The company would go on to build 223 locomotives before the death of Arthur Bell in 1878. Henry K. Porter would eventually rename the company the H. K. Porter Company and continue business on his own. By now, he had built quite a reputation as a builder of rugged industrial locomotives, They had even developed a system of interchangeable parts like wheels, pistons, and boilers to help customers tailor a locomotive better suited to their needs. In 1890, they produced their first compressed air locomotive for a mine in Pennsylvania. The compressed air locomotives used, well, compressed air instead of steam. This had the advantage of not having to worry about coal smoke or a high-pressure boiler inside a mine shaft. In 1919, the H.K. Porter Company was asked to build 20 460 locomotives for the Manila Railroad Company in the Philippines. These weighed up to 73 tons and were the largest locomotives that they had ever built. In the years following World War I, there was a major road construction boom in the United States, and many grading contractors used H.K. Porter locomotives as earth movers to haul dirt away from construction sites. Though sadly, the company's founder, Henry Porter, who was still running the company, would pass away on April 10th, 1921, at the age of 81. The company struggled on through the Great Depression, but declared bankruptcy in 1939. Production picked up again, however, during World War II, and in 1942, H.K. Porter was even recognized for their service to the United States. However, by that point, Demand for steam locomotives, especially light-duty ones, was on the decline. They had many diesel and gasoline locomotives on their catalog, but sadly that was not enough to save them from their inevitable demise. In 1950, the H.K. Porter Company produced their last locomotive, which was exported to Brazil. The spare parts business was later sold to the Davenport Locomotive Company in Iowa, and from then on, the H.K. Porter Company ceased to exist. 
Many of their locomotives, however, have survived into preservation. Many in my home state of Arizona. Some elsewhere are even operational. Speaking of operational porters, that brings me to the topic of Brooklyn East District Terminal Number 15, or as some of you may know, Strasburg Railroad Thomas. That's right. Strasburg Railroad Thomas was built from parts of Brooklyn East District Terminal Number 15. They used her wheels, boiler, and pistons. However, they had to fabricate a new water tank, converting it from a saddle tank to a side tank. This was done not only to make it look more like Thomas, but also to increase the water capacity, as the locomotive in its original form couldn't make the five-mile round trip on a single tank. The Strasburg's decision to build a Thomas replica out of an existing locomotive was met with much controversy from rail fans. But for the sake of this video, we're going to leave that alone for right now because, frankly, I don't want to get into it. And there's a lot of other YouTube videos that cover the same thing, so we'll just leave that alone for now. As for the HK Porter Company... Though they are but a memory in the modern day, their mark on railroad history cannot be denied, and they remain one of the greatest manufacturers of industrial railroad equipment. And with that, thank you all for watching. I'm Tim the Train Guy, and bye for now.